These are technically being offered at a discount now. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. When Gibson created the original collection and made sense of all the models back in 2019, I did a review and demo of the Gibson 50 Standard P90. Here we are about four years later, they finally introduced one new color, and I'm ever so excited to see it in the flesh. The color we're talking about is Tobacco Burst. Oh man, that just has a whole different vibe to it as compared to a gold top. I've been seeing a lot of nice ones out there with crazy wood grain. Like this one's got some interesting stuff as well. In fact, I think the dealer sent me a different one because I had asked him if they had one that had a little bit more crazy wood grain. So I might be wondering why is this new color worth a whole new review and demo of pretty much the exact same guitar? Well, it's because this is actually a very special color. Did you guys know the very first burst color ever put on a solid body Les Paul was this exact guitar? Rudy's Music had this guitar advertised for such a long time. It is reportedly the very first burst. It was a 1956 Les Paul in a very similar finish to this. And coincidentally, Gibson's brand president actually just recently bought that guitar. So I figured we'd get some sort of a reissue or tribute to that model. And then maybe we'll get some sort of like a collector's edition run. But until then, you can get a cool tobacco P90. I mean, maybe this was in the works even before that, but it is a nice homage to that. Secondly, this accidentally pays tribute to a cool 70s early 80s model known as the Pro Deluxe. Now those things came in a rare cherry sunburst or gold top finish but most of them were this like tobacco burst. But the big spec difference of the Pro Deluxe is instead of the mini humbuckers that regular deluxes had it was the P90s like we've got right here. Oh and those also had ebony fretboards and we've only got rosewood over here but it's pretty dark. But when this model was first introduced it was $24.99. In today's market after all the price increases and inflation adjustment it is $24.99. $27.99. But I had a realization. These are actually being sold at a discount because they did not go up in price at the last increase. A regular 50 standard with humbuckers actually increased to 3000 So you can get P90s at a $200 discount. And I guess, yeah, you're not getting the flame top. So maybe that's why they decide not to increase it. But not every 50 standard has a crazy top. And that doesn't mean every single one of these is a plain top. Sometimes you can find some that have some figuring. In fact, the Gibson stock photo shows flame figuring on theirs, but I've only seen a few like that. As far as case candy goes, it's your regular stuff. Strap, a baggie with your polished cloth, multi-tool, and some other various paperwork. The Gibson app page, which is fairly new. Your baby photo, and of course your pre-packed checklist. So that's pretty much the gist behind this one. However, you know, sometimes it's just good to re-review models after a couple of years because my old ones from 2019 slash early 2020, maybe some things have changed. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Well, that just totally changed the vibe of this guitar. I love the look. I just need some black covers over here. But that's just the pickups completely exposed. But it reminds me of the 2008 Antique Vintage Sunburst Slash Limited Edition. It had the uncovered black bobbin humbuckers. And this almost has that exact same finish to it. Because it's less of like an orangish yellow color. It's more like a natural. And then you get the black border. But Gibson does officially call this tobacco burst finish. And look at the Sweetwater page. You can see it varies highly example to example. And also how you photograph it. Like in person, I don't even see this reddish layer. But anyways, let's go ahead and check out these pickups. The back side of the neck reads Rhythm P90 Soap Bar. Soap Bar refers to this style of P90. The other variation is called a dog ear and they secure to the top of the guitar and they have a little bit of a tab over here. Then our bridge pickup, very similar, just called the Lead P90. Within the circuit, the bridge pickup reads 7.77k ohms, our neck is at 7.89, and the middle position just for fun here, 3.91. But here's what the actual route looks like itself. It has two screw holes right there and then randomly a 70 written in there. So basically you have this additional channel route down here because of the screws that go through the P90 to help secure it. They need this additional room. But when you first tear it apart, it actually has this metal base plate in it. And that's what those two screw holes are for. It's to secure that into place. And then your height adjustment screws go into here. But these also utilize springs within your screws to help give it some resistance. But what's nice about that is, say you try this and you don't really like it and you want to try mini humbuckers. They fit in the exact same style route and they use the same style base plates. Their screws just go through here. And since you have this long route, you won't actually even be able to tell somebody's been messing with stuff. But here's what our bridge pickup cavity looks like. Our readings are LPS for Les Paul Standard 50s P90 Original Collection. 
Moving on here, we have our regular original collection ABR1 bridge. It is a true ABR1, but it sits on studs more like a Nashville. Here you can see what I'm talking about. And we have a lightweight aluminum tailpiece by Advanced Plated Incorporated. As far as our controls here, very basic three-way toggle switch. Then you have a volume for each pickup and a tone for each pickup. I really love the way that these knobs look. They're not quite the historic style, but they pair very well with this finish. And I'm kind of sad this one has a pick guard at all, because it hides a really cool feature of this one, the very ringedness. But sadly, if you want to run this pick guard off, you'd have to live with a clear coat chip right there that happened when they installed the pick guard. That's a bit of a bummer. But if we're being realistic here, I mean, you're going to have to deal with a hole in the top anyway, so it's not that much more of a big deal. But now we can move on from that maple top and solid mahogany body to a rosewood fretboard mahogany neck. 22 medium jumbo style frets. You've got your acrylic trapezoid inlays. We've got an 18 degree headstock pitch with a 4 degree neck angle. Pair that with a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length and a standard 12 inch fretboard radius. With a nut width of 1.72 inches, that increases to 2.09 by the 12th. First fret neck depth of 0.9, that increases to 1.02 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the 1st fret and 12th fret, just a nice rounded C. Not overly chunky, about as big as USA standards come. As far as our headstock goes, our truss rod cover reads standard, and we've got our regular truss rod, Les Paul model silkscreen, and a Mother of Pearl Gibson logo. Moving on to the backside, we have a nice natural finish, kind of pairs well with the center of the top burst. But the solder work on this one's kind of interesting. Usually you ground off your pickup in a separate location than at the spot that you bend the leg on, and then they just kind of wrap it around there to get to this lug. And they did the same thing with our ground wire over here by pairing it with our neck pickup. It's just a slightly different style than I'm used to seeing in here. But we did have quite a few wood splinters just in that control cavity there that I took out. That's okay, I just collect them over here. They help me fill in stripped out screw holes. But besides our wiring, we've got our cream output jack plate, flat Gibson strap buttons at the bottom, as well as at the top. We've got our thin binding in the cutaway. We can take a look at the edge real quick. Nothing too crazy on this example. Then we can run along the back of the neck real quick before we get to our Gibson Cluson Deluxe tuners and our serial number that dates this one to 2023, 31st day of production, initial batch, and 162nd guitar stamped that particular day. Now as far as QC, we do have some tooling marks, not quite as bad as they were when they had first came out, but you can definitely see like a few right here. The only thing that I would personally point out as something that was just completely missed is right down here. You see this fret nib? They forgot to properly shape it. It's just needs a little bit more filing right there. Otherwise, I'd say they're doing a pretty good job here. I don't know if this belongs within QC or if that's just how they make them nowadays, but I see this a lot, that the routes for the back plates get overextended quite often, but maybe that's just there in case there's manufacturing tolerances between the backplate manufacturers so that they don't just get a whole bunch of plates that don't fit because it's pretty snug on all sides except for these two over here but thankfully no like chip outs or anything but wow that one's chunky 10 pounds 4.3 ounces let's go ahead plug it in and hear how it sounds
sounds like some good P90s to me. I did have to do a little bit of adjustment to the pickups straight from the factory. I wasn't getting enough output out of this bridge, so I actually had to raise the pull pieces as well as the pickup. And now I'm, I would say I'm pretty happy with it. I still think I need to fine tune it a little bit, but it's pretty good. <laughs> and spanky. Let's try some dirt. <laughs> Now that we know all about the new finish on the 50s P90 standard, what are my final thoughts on this? I definitely liked it. I think you guys will too, if you enjoy P90 pickups, that is. They're a little bit different than humbuckers. They've got a little bit of a snarl and bite to them, but you also have to put up with some 60 cycle hump. So whether that's right for you or not, you'll just have to try one, I guess. But as far as this model being re-reviewed after about three or four years, I would still say it holds up. I really love the original collection Les Paul standards. They are a great value for the money. Now they are starting to get expensive, but there's always the used market if you're that worried about it. You can still find a great deal in like the demo shop and all that. So just because the prices are starting to creep up on brand new, you've got a lot of options, unlike when these were first introduced in 2019. So maybe that's why they started us off with a cheaper price at that point. So if you're interested in being the next owner of this particular demo piece, you can check it out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. Thank you, Troglites, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.